My name's Beth Millington and I am a fourth generation West Australian silversmith. So the workshop was started in 1907 by my great grandfather, J.W.R. Linton. My dad was a silversmith, my uncle George is also a silversmith. So I grew up around the workshop, grew up around them making and all the manner of people traipsing in and out, also craftspeople or just other makers. My dad didn't want me to be a silversmith because his dad didn't want him to be a silversmith either. There was just no money in silversmithing. And, you know, to be fair, it's a dying trade. So I was interested in fine jewellery and I went into a fine jewellery apprenticeship first. That was after I started working with my dad when I was about 16. But I just remember, ever since I was a little girl, you know, that just that smell in the workshop of metal and grease. It was just like beautiful. I just, I still love it. It's still one of my favourite smells. Very earthy. Um, and just being in there, Dad's workshop had all these amazing pigeonhole drawers and everywhere there were treasures that went back, you know, years and years, dusty, beautiful fragments of things, you know. So that's, I guess, why I was attracted to it. My work is all about the process of um, handmaking um, and I guess in a sense about traditional crafts. I don't use technology much because I sort of feel like Every time I pick up a hammer, you know, it's an echo of, you know, craftsmen picking up hammers from forever, you know, and forward as well, I, I guess, as a sense of that kind of connection. When I was commissioned by the very Reverend Dean Chris Chataway for the Patricia Pigeon Bequest to make a complete set of communion wear, it was very clear that Chris wanted very artisanal, craft-driven work. Um, the cathedral itself is very heavily sort of um, steeped in crafts. There's various artisans from around the world and also from West Australia who have contributed to work within the cathedral. I myself designed the door handles about a decade ago for the big glass airlock doors. My grandfather and my great-grandfather both have work in the cathedral too, which, which is a beautiful tie-in. I wanted the pieces to be very refined, very clean and modern, but also to have that um, gravitas of very deeply artisanal kind of pieces, you know, really handmade, which is different to machine made work, is that, you know, at its best, it really speaks about humanity, you know, and I, I wanted the pieces to, to have that sense of history, but also uh, contemporary value in their aesthetic. The cathedral was very keen that the pieces um, be very uniquely West Australian and I decided to express that through the use of materials um, rather than motifs. Um, as I said I wanted to keep the lines really clean and, and very elegant. We had many meetings to go over the forms themselves. I made drawings of course and then also copper models to make sure that they were going to function the way that we wanted them to. Because we want them to be used, it's in that communication with the congregation, you know, so within that, in that relationship that these pieces will really kind of live. They have their own life that way, you know, if they exist behind the glass of a cabinet, you know, because they <laughs> can't be used, because they drip or because they, you know, slosh or because they're not, you know, functional, then they don't get to, you know, that they won't really live their purpose. Once we had moved through that process, I made um, the final drawings uh, for them to approve and then moved on to the making. So the metal starts as sheet and then I compress that sheet over a stake in a process called raising to create the, the hollow forms. So you can see this is the start of my cruet jug um, or one of my cruet jugs. This is the model, this is where it'll end up until uh, the metal's compressed incrementally over the stake and a number of courses until it, I create the desired shape. Um, so after the pieces are raised, they need to be hammered um, to refine the surface before they, they can be finished and also obviously all the other bits and pieces, you know, added. The chalices and saboria uh, were, um, are also comprised of a number of separate pieces, the bowls which are raised, the stem um, which is constructed and fabricated and the base, um, which is also raised. I have inlay 18 karat gold crosses into the silver. The knop is, is made in chrysoprase and the whole, um, the whole, all the pieces are um, screwed together with threaded wire. 
I wanted to use um, materials that were um, indigenous to West Australia, um, which is why I chose the chrysoprase. Chrysoprase is a beautiful semi-translucent sort of green stone. It is one of the few stones that we have in Australia that bears a mention in the Bible. It's one of the ten foundational stones of Jerusalem. The colour green in biblical symbology refers to sort of rebirth and renewal and, you know, new growth. The cathedral would like to commission the pieces in uh, for Michael Mass, which will be end of September 2022. I've already made the first delivery, the chalices in Saboria, safely now in the custody of St George's Cathedral, um, and I'm currently working on the um, on the final six pieces.